So this was a really exciting moment, I think, for a lot of people. And we even talked about whether or not this was a good idea. And we kind of were like, mm, unsure about it, uh, about the Wyatt Six debuting on Raw instead of at SummerSlam or instead of a big ple or something like that we thought that okay if anybody is going to need to have a big moment in a debut it's going to be uncle howdy slash bo dallas so that was not what happened but i don't i don't even i just i don't know what to say about this because i don't think that this could have gone better i honestly don't and i have to say i i cried at the end not because of how good the match was but like the rocking chair at the beginning Oh, that was very nice. Bray's really... music. Yeah. I started, I was just like a baby because Eric Rowan doing the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just all of these little things for Bray and for Brody. And then you see the moments of what happened when they went off the air and they were just like hugging each other and just like pointing upwards. It's like, to me, that is why you have to be invested in what the White Six are doing because it's so beyond what we're seeing on TV. Mm. It, it's it goes beyond what they're doing in the ring, you know. Like that's why I I was a little bit nervous about how this was going to happen and how the match was going to go and how it was going to be received. But it was so good, and all of them were good. Gacy, Rowan, and Loomis. So good. Loomis the- is my favorite. Mercy, he is my favorite. Oh my god, I love how they just fling him. It's incredible. And and you would it's- never guess that from a dude his size. You know what I mean? Like that. You that guess is that sex or Loomis. No, and all like they look so cool. Um, and and the things that Michael Cole was saying too, because you know he's like, oh Gacy, like he thinks he's Huskus, and like there was mm. all these little things that were like reminding you. And I don't know if you could tell, but you could tell that's what kind of got me. And I'm not gonna get emotional when Cole was saying that Bray was looking down and he oh, was yeah, so yeah, proud. Yeah. Oh my god, uh, it's getting me teary. You can tell that Cole was getting a little like he had that like in his throat. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, because as I said, the stuff that they're doing, it just goes beyond what we're seeing. It's so important to them. And I'm sure it's therapeutic. And uh, I'm just really happy with how this went. And I feel like it was just, I'm obsessed with the Wyatt Six. Like everything that they're doing, I'm obsessed. It's so different than what we've seen before. And it, it does go beyond wrestling at this point you know you're more invested not because of them wrestling in the ring like i i we just wanted to see it happen that they're going to be wrestling like you're so invested with the the profiles and all that that Mm -hmm. it makes them and the connection to i mean bray it's the whole thing is incredible it's just it's so well done Yeah, it's like, I think part of the thing that's making it so successful, too, and we've talked about it, is how compelling the stories are, because it does, it it takes so much from real life, um, and everybody knows about it. Like, if you're a wrestling fan, then you knew about the Wyatt family, you knew about Bray Wyatt, you knew about Luke Harper slash Brody Lee, like, you knew all of this stuff, and you knew Bo Dallas was Bray's brother. You knew that these guys, some of them went to AEW and that they had worked together and they were very close and blah, 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 blah. You know, like there's all of that. Plus, even the ones that are were never a part of the Wyatt family, you knew Dexter Loomis was flopping on the main roster since he got called up. You knew that Nikki Cross was getting tossed around and doing stupid shit once she was brought up on the main roster, you know? So it's like, Joe Gacy, mm-hmm. this was the only one who basically got a promotion out of it. You know, like he was thriving oh, yeah. down in NXT. So like he's the only one who didn't I wasn't really... thriving for a while. Well, was, he was thriving with schism and then yes, his he was with Dijak was good and then he was gonna flounder. So yeah, it's just it's but it's nice to see him get, like fall forward. And what's cool about his involvement too is that he was involved in Bray's original return. He was one of the um he was puppets coming to life so that's kind of cool yeah. because it was like he was kind of used as just an extra <laughs> but like then, it actually yeah, ended up being what he ended up doing so 
I don't know. I think all of it's really cool. I'm really excited about it. And I'm curious to see where they go from here. And if, you know, American Made is still going to want to have another match or if they're like, we're done. And if that's the case, like, what are the White Six going to do next? Who are they going to target next? I'm just kind of curious. And I hope that they keep going the way that they are, because I would hate for us to be sitting here like on a high, so excited about what they've done. And then we get to a point where we're like, oh, you think it's the end of their feud with American Made? I don't know. I, I think uh i don't necessarily think so um but i i wouldn't be surprised if it's something that they try to make it seem like it's up to to chad and like they're gonna be like nope no we don't want to mess with them anymore you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. that might be it but we haven't gotten a hint of where else they might go as in the white six like they haven't had any involvement really with anybody else so i don't know that they're completely done with it yet um so that's why i'm like hmm what are we gonna do you know 